Hey there YouTubers, a few things to talk about today. We've got a software update, we've got a hardware update, and we've got some data from my buddy engineer. Welcome to Digitech. Hey there, so um, as I said at the top of the video, a couple of things to talk about, or a few things to talk about today. Um, I'll pop onto the screen some of the latest performance uh, data from my buddy Engineerd. He uh, has a fairly unique way of tracking how these things are performing. He recently had a hardware 3 upgrade, which is pertinent because I've just had one too, so we'll talk about that. Um, but you'll see from the data that they are after a period of poor performance, mostly around exiting the driving lane or exiting the overtaking lane back into the driving lane, which um, it wasn't doing anywhere near enough. It looks like they fixed that in both the software and the hardware updates. So performance is looking good. Um, it's on track with where it was before. I am aware that they are rewriting autopilot uh, and recoding it specifically to take into account the extra performance and capability of the new hardware three. So everything out there that you'd buy today has hardware or three on it, but a few of us, a few lucky people who had signed up for the full self-driving feature have had the retrofit upgrade and so engine had that a while ago and you can see that on his data i put my car in the other day for four new tires for a two-year check and got the full self-driving computer upgrade or hardware three upgrade um, and and therefore you'll see from the rendering and the visual visualization on the dash that the car's seeing all sorts of things now i did in the 2.5 hardware with a software update get the road cones it saw pretty much everything as a road cone, or at least rendered it as a road cone. So I kind of got over my initial excitement of seeing road cones. Uh, never thought I'd be so happy to see road cones in my life, but now I've got hardware three, there are a whole bunch of other things that the car will see and render on display. I am now driving with software version 2020.12.11.1, which is the very latest version of the software, but that software is still coded for um, hardware 1, 2, 2.5 and 3. It's not new in terms of being specifically designed to take um, most use from the power that's available with hardware 3. So yeah, not expecting to see many autopilot improvements, if any at all. Um, autopilot's fantastic anyway. Uh, it's obviously getting better all the time, as you'll see, as you was seen from the data that Engineered provides, but ultimately it's fantastic. It's on autopilot now. Um, it navigates these roads really, really, really well. Uh, it navigates motorways and dual carriageways really well too, and we'll get to some of that. Um, I still test it through the roundabouts. I don't expect, oh, there's a cyclist. Will the car slow me down? No, didn't see that cyclist. Well, that's not great, is it? <laughs> so there's an example of it not really seeing the cyclist when it should or in time to slow the vehicle down reasonably. I wasn't willing to leave it any longer. It usually does. So it usually sees cyclists and slows the car right down. It won't overtake cyclists. It usually plops you in behind them. But uh, for some reason it didn't see that one. I will review the footage and the dash footage when I get home and work out what was going on there. But um, yeah, the car wasn't slowing down. So yeah, as you can see, it's still not where you'd want it to be for full self-driving. But now that I've got hardware three and now that they're developing the code for hardware three, we expect to see that improve more and more over the coming year or two. A um, few things in the States, they do get a few extra features in the States that we don't get here. They are now getting on this revision of the software auto stopping at traffic lights. So we will see traffic lights in this video and it does know if they're green or red or otherwise but um, it doesn't actually respond to them, not in the UK at least. That's uh, in release in the US, stopping at traffic lights and there are a few videos on YouTube for that but yeah you don't really see that in the UK just yet. So, yeah, what have we covered? We've covered uh, data from Engineered, we've covered the fact that we've got Hardware 3, we've got a whole bunch of new visualizations, road cones, posts, bins, um, uh, lines in the road uh, and signs in the road. So, I'm not sure if you're seeing them at this stage, but you will also see arrows in the road. It's not picking up the ones I'm going over at the moment but they're largely obscured by the car in front before we get there, but you might see those on some of the renders. I will just speed the video up as we're just doing normal stuff and then just 
slow it back down for anything which is particularly relevant for the new update. So yeah, there we have it. Just out doing my usual run, which gives me a good idea of how AP is performing. Well, uh, we'll see how we get on, and I will highlight when there's something specific to talk about. Enjoy the ride. So this is a nice little example of uh, the new rendering. There's some bins on the right hand side which are kind of popping up and then disappearing. Just the truck going by, they'll disappear again and pop up again as you can see. Uh, and we're coming up to some road work so it will give you a really good example of how it sees the cones, how well it sees them um, compared to all the other bits and pieces that are around them. And um, yeah, so far my own experience is that it really does pick these things up well. It sees cones that you don't really usually see yourself. I guess you get used to seeing these things at the side of the road, you don't really notice them. So I've never noticed so many road cones in my life. Uh, we see all the road cones now. So it will see the ones in front. There's some traffic lights there. It's picked up the temporary traffic lights. It's picked up the cones. It's, uh, counting the cones on the right hand side as you see there's loads of other bits and pieces around but it still sees the cones which is just an example of how good it really is put it back on autopilot oh it won't go back on just for the minute there you go back on see there it was an example it's uh, seeing road cones and bins and posts and everything really well let's get on with the ride You can see some bins and some arrows in the road. It's picking those up really nicely. It won't show the arrows on the other side coming in this way, um, but it does usually pick up arrows in other lanes when you're um, when it's a dual lane road, for example. But uh, another example of new to version three and the update. <laughs> traffic lights. That line in the road is where it would normally stop if the right lights were red and if we had that feature available in the UK. So it's picking up the lines, it knows where it should be stopping which is comforting um, but just not actually doing the stop. Uh, I'm not sure when that will be released in the UK. Sooner the better. That was interesting too, it picked up a round bin at the side of the road and another one right there, so even round bins, um, which just round things at the side of the road really, it's, uh, it's seeing them as bins and rendering them on the screen, so yeah, it really knows what it's seeing. Let's keep going. So it uh, saw those people at the side of the road, showed them up as red, showed them as being slightly on the road, and set an alert, although they weren't on the road. I think on the visualization it showed them as being slightly on the road, but yet it didn't stop the car. So uh, I don't know if that's the visualization being over cautious and visualizing it in such a way, but the car actually knew that they weren't on the road. I guess it must have done, otherwise it would have slowed the car down. But um, yeah, that was uh, odd visualization given the circumstances so uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, well, uh, heading onto a dual carriageway. Let's see how it handles entering the dual carriageway from the slip road. 
see what it does here. I'm going to let it run out and see what happens. Well, it did that itself. Didn't like it, but it only did it itself. So it, uh, it kind of knew to get on the lane and not to drift over to the left, which is a good thing. Just left it really late. Uh, it's a shame actually we're heading to some restricted speed, so um, I will bring the speed down to the speed limit. Uh, but it's a good opportunity to see how Hardware 3 and the new software is handling dual carriageways and motorways. I would expect it to be absolutely brilliant, but we'll see. One of the things I want to watch out for here is uh, usually on this road it will do a thing I call speed matching where if I'm in overtaking lane and it's coming up on a slower moving vehicle on the inside lane sometimes quite a lot but sometimes it will um, slow and match the speed of the car on the inside lane uh, so I want to watch out for if it's doing that and the other thing is be interesting to see how it handles is with these roadworks we've got painted lines that have been blacked out in the road as, and cat size to make the lane markings just want to see how well it handles all these different random things that we kind of deal with instinctively every day but for the computer for the AI it's uh, learning about them all the time so let's see how we get on so far so good Something I've noticed is it's telling me to pull into the right lane. It will probably come back into lane now, yeah. So if it sees lots of road cones on the inside lane, I think it assumes that that lane is going to narrow or is going to move off to the right if the road cones are on the left. I've seen that a few times now where if it sees lots of road cones, it will suggest moving into the right hand lane uh, to preempt maybe that that lane might be narrowing. So I think that's some good thing it makes a lot of sense if it sees a load of road cones it could very well be just about to merge into the other lane it kind of preempts it. it doesn't force you to do it and it doesn't try to do anything unusual but just uh, highlights that you should be moving into that lane so that's good that the car is preempting what might happen rather than just reacting played when it went back to navigate on autopilot. Not sure what it was trying to do there. Couldn't make his mind up. That's another example of where it's suggesting we pull out to the next lane because of all the cones on the inside. I expect it to come back now. It has. So it definitely does that. It sees a long line of cones on the inside on dual carriage rail motorway. It suggests you pull into the overtaking lane to move away from them. Uh, I'm guessing that's some sort of preemptive security feature. No, nope. there you go. Speed matching the car on the inside lane down to 66. Well, I've got it set to 60, 75. It's still matching, it's still matching. There is a car behind me, so I might have to do something in a second. But why it's matching that car, I have no idea. Now it's decided to move past it, and that's what it does. Speed matches the car on the inside lane for a while, it kind of works out that it's not supposed to be doing that, and then speeds back up. But why it does it in the first place, I have no idea. Any ideas, let me know. to the end of the drive, one of my favourite bits with the auto lane exit. Um, it will do all that itself so I'm still not going to touch it. I'm going to let it get to the end of this road and turn and indicate and slow us and do all those things that it does. I still think that's absolutely fantastic. So what did we learn? Um, we learned that there's still a bit of speed matching going on. Still seeing cars on the inside lane matching their speed, thinking about it and then overtaking them when it feels ready. Not sure why it's doing that. We learn it still can't do roundabouts, although I'm gonna tap the throttle and see how it deals with this roundabout coming up. Um, we learned that everything else it's doing 
with its usual, um, well, brilliantly, really. Uh, so, handled that roundabout really well on its own. But on the dual carriageway, uh, seeing the vehicle in front and plenty of time to ask you to pull out, we learned that it's seeing a line of cones on the inside as a reason to pull out of that lane to the right hand side. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's doing loads of good stuff. If it was on full autopilot and we weren't in the UK so it was changing lanes and everything for you then I would have been really happy with that drive. It would have pretty much done everything I wanted it to do except for the speed matching piece. Uh, we learned that it didn't set itself up nicely for joining the motorway so from the on-ramp to the dual carriageway it didn't handle that particularly well in Navigate and Autopilot. I have seen it do that on other roads so I'm not sure why on that particular one it doesn't work but overall new version of the software, new hardware, everything working pretty much as it was before if not maybe just a little bit better. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been informative and has helped you in some way. If it has, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, don't forget to share, and don't forget to tell me uh, anything you think I could do to be improving. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.